Okay, good morning. Uh, this video today is all about my six month, 5,000 mile review of my amazing Ducati Multistrada V4S. As I said, it's six months old, to me anyway, I'm second hand. Uh, I had just on a thousand miles when I got it. It's, got, it's now just shy of six. And I just thought it'd be a great time just to give it a review and share my experiences, thoughts, if I've got any issues, I'll share them with you as well in terms of problems or or uh, frustrations I've had, which are very, very few. Um, hopefully, hopefully you'll find this a little bit of value. Anyway, here's the bike. As I said, it's the Ducati Multistrada V4S with the um, Gran Turismo engine, which is uh, the engine which only requires the valves being serviced every 36,000 unlike the other Ducatis. Um, this has got the double sided swing arm unlike the Pikes Peak. Optional extras on this are the full Acra system DCAT uh, which takes the standard 170 brake horsepower set up to 180 and provides a lot more mid-range. Absolutely superb. This has got the optional wire wheels 17 inch on the back, 19 inch on the front on this particular bike, it's got the front strut guards, it's got the crash bars, it's got the ancillary lights here, it's got the updated and larger hand guards, standard screen around this side. You see the suspension set up here, and it did have a plate on the back here. For the top box i've taken that off i don't use a, a top box i do use a soft rear bag and that just goes on the pillion seat i put a different tail tidy on this is the evotech tail tidy just coming around also here we have the ring for the tank bag clicks into there in terms of specification and non-standard items that i've added i've put the full radiator and oil radiator guards a must for any bike um, other than that it's got the heated seat heated pillion seat heated grips it's got the radar front and rear with the amazing blind spot protector the adaptive cruise control on this is superb uh, although i'll touch on that in a minute it has the hangers for the panniers, which, as you can see, these move here, so the panniers actually are gliding. That's all apparently around being able to give the bike a little bit more, uh, I suppose, short-footedness with the luggage on when you're turning a pace. It just reduces that inertia a little, apparently. I haven't noticed it, to be, to be honest with you. Um, other than that, it's pretty standard. Um, when I bought it, I went for the grey. Um, I have actually sort of just put a few cosmetic changes. I've put the sticker kit on, put a few bits and pieces on the front, just to, I suppose, individualise it. Other than that, that's the bike as it comes. Um, in terms of maintenance, I've had to put a, t a rear tyre on. Um, went to the Picos, you'll have seen the videos. If not, I checked them out, really, really enjoyed that trip. Just put a new tyre on when I went. So that's got, well, I'm getting on for two and a half thousand miles on, two thousand miles. Still tons of tread. I think there's a good six, seven mil still on that. I did put a new tire on the on the front. I didn't actually um, think there was a lot of tread on that tire. It was only about sort of three, four mil, and I didn't know whether that was just heavily worn on the thousand miles before the bike. So I put a new tire on, only to find. But the tyre that came off has got pretty much the same amount of tread as the new one, so that's in the garage uh, for future use. Um, let's talk about just generally, let's get a couple of the niggles that I've had out of the way, because this has been an amazing bike so far. So I think other people have commented on this. I am not convinced with the brakes on this. I was coming back from the Picos and uh, some British riding, coming home literally on, on the home stretch up from Plymouth up to the northwest of England, went to grab a brake, 
and the, and the handle went straight down to the grip. But, um, squeaky bum time, definitely. It came back with a couple of pumps, but every time I would come to use the brakes after you know a couple of minutes, the same would have happened. So anyway, straight into the dealer. The dealership was amazing. Uh, my Ducati dealer is up in Preston, Ducati Preston. They were brilliant. They bled the brakes, um, left it overnight, um, felt fine, but because it, it went so quickly uh, when it was coming back up from Plymouth, uh, without even asking or prevaricating over it, they just put a brand new Brembo Master Cylinder on. Since then it's been great, it ha haven't had any issues since. But it, this brake handle still does feel a little, like, you know, the first couple of pumps, it just feels it builds pressure rather than having pressure instantaneously. So that's, that's the only sort of problem I've had with the bike. I've had a, one, I suppose, electronic gremlin. Uh, around the same time, actually, uh, cruise control wouldn't work. Um, wouldn't be active, wouldn't, I couldn't activate it, didn't know what the problem was. Uh, went into the dealership. Um, they didn't find a fault with it, to be honest with you. Um, but they did do a, 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 an ECU check on it. Uh, since then, it's been fine. Other than that, it's been faultless. However, <laughs> idiot here did throw 20 litres of diesel into it. Um, that was an adventure in itself. Check it out on the video. Um, got it sorted anyway, but the bike's been fine. It's been really, really good. In terms of performance of the bike, it is outstanding. Outstanding. 180 brake horsepower on a 230 kilogram bike. With the suspension, this has got the Skyhook suspension, really, really good. It just floats, especially in touring mode. In fact, I think I've been doing maybe 80% of my riding in touring mode. I don't feel as if it needs anymore. But when I have put the uh, the sport mode on, immediately the suspension firms up. The throttle response is much, much sharper. The amount of options you've got in this bike, though, to set your own settings, perfect for yourself. You can get, you can actually go into any of the modes. So you've got. Um, let me just show you the modes we've got. No fuel. So we've got Sport, Touring, Enduro and Urban. Enduro, basically when you're on off-road, which we did a little bit of uh, in the Picos on the Espanama Trail. You'll also see the word Evo here. That's because it's got the exhaust system and the remap. Um, if it doesn't have the Evo on it, you don't have the remap. Easiest way to, to know. Um, Literally, when you're coming back in into the main menu, you've got your settings up at the top. And if you keep the toggle down, it'll fall down to here. So here you've got your uh, consumption, trip date, data. Um, so it's saying here over 5,769 miles, I've been averaging 39.6 miles per gallon. To be honest with you, on a easy gentle run you, i'm getting into the 40s mid, mid to high 40s but if you push on you do notice that the juice does go down quite a bit quickly um in terms of range on this again one of the concerns i've before I bought it was that the range was going to be dreadful i found it really really fine i was getting 170 miles to a tank before the um it really was getting down to sort of you know sub 20 30 miles I did do a little test, I let it get down to zero, uh, I rode it for four miles and I was able to to fill up and at that point then I literally just found I could get another 20, 29 miles, 30 miles out of it because there's one and a half litres in it at that point. Okay, so let's talk about my experience with this bike. I've got to say I've loved it. I've come from sports bikes, sports tourers and when I got this Multistrada it was a bit of a leap of faith first impressions when I got it much heavier it's what 230 plus kilos wet um, slow maneuvering wheeling it in and out um, really felt that that extra weight um, wasn't too comfortable using the center stand now got it down to a T not a problem in fact I, I generally leave it on the center stand even in the garage it's on the center stand now it's only when I'm out and about really I use the side stand uh, really practical for like you know doing doing the washing doing the chain loop, all that type of stuff, really, really good. Um, in terms of riding, it's brilliant, I've loved it. I've loved every minute of it, to be honest with you. And when you get used to that power, and it is, it is powerful, this bike, even though it's heavy. Um, you know, compared to the, the KTM, which was what, 170, 165, 170 brake, this is 180 brake. You don't feel that extra power 
Uh, it, it, in terms of torque, it's not as powerful as the V twin, uh, but when this thing gets going, it is brilliant. You know, you get up into sort of you know the plus six thousand rev range, it just comes alive, and the bark through the exhaust is awesome. Really enjoy it. It feels really light and nimble when you're moving along. I've just done what a couple of under, couple of a thousand miles in the Picos, going through the mountains, uh, with full panniers on. The bike just takes the turns, takes the bend brilliantly. Even though it's got the 19 inch front, uh, it really feels light and, and nimble. Uh, comparatively, so and I should say, you know, it's not as nimble as light as light as my 890 Duke R, but for a big bike, it really, really moves well. 19 inch on the front. Sometimes it can feel it can feel a little not vague, but you just got to really sort of sometimes it just feels if you've got to push it into into a turn, push it into a bend, more so at higher speeds. Whether the 17 inch on the uh, Pikes Peak uh, will feel differently, we won't know, not yet anyway. Um, but absolutely love the feel of the bike. Um, in terms of comfort, the seat the seat's firm. Uh, but it is comfortable. Uh, the heated seat, can't really feel it to be honest with you. It, it feels warm, it doesn't get hot. The uh, heated grips, however, are very good, very hot, very quickly. Really impressed with that. In terms of uh, riding position, sit very upright. Um, the pegs are low. I wouldn't say they're forward, but you feel in an upright position. You don't feel as if your legs are bent too much. In terms of the handlebars, these are just a, a metre wide. At, on occasion, on a long journey, I get a little bit of discomfort in the back of my shoulders. And I, sometimes I do feel as if I'm reaching a little bit. I'm six foot one. Um, but I do tend to sit back on the seat. Obviously, sitting more forward on the seat makes it more comfortable. But my natural position is literally sort of to reverse myself up to the, up to the front of the pillion seat. But comfortable, very, very comfortable indeed on, on long journeys. And that's the thing, it's the versatility of this bike which is amazing. You can hoon it around the lanes, you can put baggage on it and do autobahns. Uh, it does everything you really want to do, it really is versatile without necessarily compromising any of those capabilities. In terms of off-roading, I did the ABR festival a month or so ago, truck off-road, yeah, it's a heavy bike. It's a heavy bike. Uh, I don't think this is an off-road bike. It's fine for bridleways and all that type of stuff. As I said, I did the so uh, Sotras to Espanama Trail in the Picos. <laughs> Watch the video again if you haven't seen it. Uh, I, I didn't drop it, but it, my God, it's, it's, it's a heavy bike. Um, if, again, off road, you want to go for a smaller bike. But no, lovely the, the experience. Um, the use that you call it an adventure bike. I, I just think it's a super sports tour, uh, to, to be honest with you. The other things I really, really appreciate is the blind spot detection. That's, I would say it's saved me many times, but it's actually, well, there's it's two ways of looking at it. You can get complacent, so you, you, you tend to find yourself not doing as many lifesavers. So I'll keep on consciously telling myself to do them. But it is great, you know, you're out with riding with other people, you know where they are, the things light up when the people are either just in your blind spots or just to the rear of you. That's, that's, that's a very, very good piece of technology. Um, the lights on this of a night, brilliant, brilliant. Really light up the road well either just on the low beam or the full beam. The other thing with this bike, which is amazing as well, is all the switch gears lit up red at night, so you can see everything that you need. The only bike I've had, oh no, the KTM had backlit, uh, but not as good as this. Every single button and control is backlit red. It's really, really nice. As you see the backlit controls. Very clear screen. Really good information, all available. One thing I didn't mention before is I'd actually put my Garmin adapter here, EvoTech um, Garmin Zumo XT stand. Um, sorry, bracket. I've done that as an extra, as I should have said as well. Panniers are really good on it as well. Um, yeah, just an all around really, really enjoyable experience. Um, to 170 on the back rather than the 190 that I'm used to. You don't miss it, to be honest with you. I've never thought, oh, it feels like I'm not going to get as much grip as I would on a sports bike. Never felt that. There again, I don't lean it maybe as, as far over as, as, I, as I would on some of my previous sports bikes. But no, a really positive experience. If you're thinking of one of, of, one of these, take them for a test ride. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised um, how versatile they are. They are big. 
they feel big when you first get on them but after a couple of miles on you know, after, you've, after you've been on this thing it all feels natural and capable um, just before we get there's one other little gripe it's this thing here this now it is so temperamental so it's got a it's got a, um, a charging port there for a phone any modern phone will not fit in there pointless again trying to shut it so come on Ducati you do better than that um, so I hope that's giving you an idea of the bike I've thoroughly enjoyed it uh, I will definitely definitely be uh, considering um, another one um, I'm even looking at one but uh, keep that to yourself um, so yeah if you've already ridden these you know how good they are if you haven't ridden them take one for a test ride and uh, you will not be disappointed just be wary of those brakes they're just not as immediate as I would like it may suit other people maybe just a personal preference the, you know the brakes work they stop the bike it's not an issue about stopping it's about the feel on that on that brake lever and that's even with a new Brembo master cylinder so I'm just trying to think of anything else just to mention I think that's it really guys I think as you can tell I'm really enjoying this um, and I will hopefully continue to enjoy it so hopefully that little sort of sharing of experience and thoughts about the Multistrada V4S has been useful. Uh, drop your comments if you've got any questions, uh, I'll happily answer them. So, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel. If you haven't already done so, like and subscribe. We've got a lot more content to come. And uh, keep safe, enjoy the ride. <laughs>